Adapting and paying it forward. Serving up at the breakfast buffet, we have Anthony Torsha. Learn how we went from becoming a nutritionist and strength coach to training it all in to adapting to the times and becoming a mortgage loan officer. I hope you guys will enjoy. Do it! Great jazz and call. There you go, Major decision, 14 to 4. And here we are. Another episode coming at you. We have Anthony Torsha. We go way back. He can he can take credit for starting the the legend a little bit here, and I'll let him, you know, talk a little bit about it. But how you doing, my man? Man, it's good to see. You. I haven't seen you with all this craziness. I haven't seen you in a while, so it's good to talk to you the last 15, 20 minutes just about everything we we've been through. So it's cool. Yeah, catching up, and arguably one of the guys that actually put up more weight than me. Uh, <laughs> oh man yeah i mean back in the day when you were like what like 110 105 i think i had i think i like tripled your your bench numbers right so i think maybe right now right now but <laughs> back in the day underground days I, w- I would smoke you the old edison crew man <laughs> oh man th- those are the days that if we can go back at that same training crew that was awesome yeah even today i'd love to get everyone back together see it see how everyone's doing i know zach would love that <laughs> He would talk about the amount of like state championships that were in that room. I mean, you go back and think about it. It's a uh, Craigie, I know Pagano, Scheffler. It was it was insane. Crazy, crazy, and it was, it was funny because uh, Zach put up something what a week ago with with John Schleifer, the Johnny Schleifer bench. <laughs> yeah, that I wish he Zach he videoed a lot, but he did not video that of me almost dying with the bar just resting on my chest and. Sh- and and John is like waiting for me to press it. I'm like, nah, dude, you can just take it. And he's just looking at me. And Zach just dying, just watching me just get crushed by like whatever it was. Like the old two finger, the old two fingers. Was, Zach always made sure we were safe, but he thought that was hilarious that he just wouldn't pick the bar up. And he was being serious, John. He was being serious. He's like, gotta lift it up. <laughs> you couldn't get it. <laughs> Make the rep or die. <laughs> right that's funny yeah that's funny. so you're doing some pretty cool stuff you were the strength coach and uh, nutritionist where at, at test test fitness yeah test sports up in martinsville and prep performance i worked for those guys and i did some nutrition once i passed my nutrition course worked for uh, absolute nutrition solutions up there and uh, that was fun that was really fun i mean you you get into this stuff because it's your passion and it really was my passion man that that was fun that was that was fun yeah, I could tell even when even when I was in high school and everything, uh, you know, your passion was lifted. Like you were a football player and everything, but you could just tell you lived you lived with the weights, man. You lived with the weights, always getting them reps up, always getting those numbers. And uh, was it right out of college you started to make the transition or were you training people throughout college? I was doing a little bit with the, 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 the people in town through mm-hmm. college because I knew that's what I wanted to do. It was actually like we were going to do a lot of talking about underground, but like, I remember the moment, like we were, it was like probably senior leading up to senior year of football. And I was like foam rolling, like my back or like my legs and everyone, like that's when everything was bumping in Edison. I was like, yo, I'm going to do this. And that's when mm-hmm. I went full into it. I stopped playing football. I, I knew I loved training and like that, that was pretty much it. Train people all through college. And then like my last year of college, I uh, started to intern and then eventually started to do part-time school and work and that's when i was like okay let's do it but it's actually kind of weird that you get into it for training but it's not about the training when you're when you're doing that sort of stuff when you you can know nutrition you can know training but it's really not about what you know it's about how you treat people and i didn't learn that up until maybe about a year a year and a half into like my career or Mm -hmm. training people that i was like you can't be a jerk to kids you can't expect a lot from susan that comes in to train because she's scared of weights you can't you have to be able to be personable and that was that was huge for me in that kind of realm and you you learn a lot about yourself and what you expect from others because where did we come from man this is the workout and like you just gotta do it like whatever you do like whatever's in front of you you just do it like that's the kind of that's the kind of mindset we were brought up and through south Plainfield. and i know you guys the wrestlers are insane but like same thing for me for football like I was like, this is what we're doing. If this is what it takes, this is what we do. And it's a different mindset when you go into the, the private world, the private sector, 
of training. It's like these people pay you, but they want what they want. They don't want what yeah. you want. Right. And yeah. That's, that's that's a different mindset right there. Right. Yeah. They don't share that passion. And, uh, you know, even with me coaching some kids with wrestling and stuff, you know, I, I, there's one thing of coaching. There's one way of sharing the passion for wrestling. I feel like what my team is not only did I train them wrestling, but I trained them how to love the sport and mm-hmm. love competition. And like you said, with the private, you know, the private sector training, like, you know, everyday people that aren't athletes, it's finding a way to make them passionate about something. Right. Yeah, or getting the most out of them because you would see kids that would come in. It's like they were lacrosse bros. We would make fun of them lacrosse bros. We would have (laughs) basketball. We would have softball. We would have a lot of women, like athletes in high school up in that area. And they didn't really care about the numbers all that much. Like they just came because their parents had them come or that they knew they had to do something in the offseason. Their Mm offseason program was crappy. So then it's like, and Pratt Performance did a really good job there. My boss there, James, James Pratt, he was awesome. He loves the psychology part of things. And that's what it really was. It was how do we create buy-in with the, like you said, with your middle school kids. None, none of those kids are thinking about college, maybe some of them. But, mm-hmm. you know, when you think about the buy-in for those kids, like if you're friends with them and you're cool with them, you show them that you care about what they do. Like someone skips and you know that they were there twice this week, where were you? Mm-hmm. we normally had people show up three days a week if you were there one you were there twice last week it's like where were you and them you knowing what they were up to like they're like oh crap so it's it's a lot of stuff like that that was really cool and uh like getting to know all like the the, the young high school kids that's always fun to bust chops with them oh yeah definitely definitely especially a younger coach you know you you relate to them more and they like to <laughs> they like to mess with you a little bit and you have to mess with them back man you can't show them weakness <laughs> no i would i would never uh, I, during during march madness was out when i was at my worst being a coach because all i could think about was just like i love college football i love college basketball it was just like they knew when they came in during college basketball or march madness it was like Coach Anthony was not going to be on his stuff. He was worried about who was winning, who was doing this. It's 4.30. <laughs> I, I always try my best, but there's still some kids that we go back and forth. It's like, man, it, it, being, being, being cool with them. Because if you're, not, if, if you're not into what they're into and you're just trying to train them hard, man, it's like they don't want anything to do with you. Yeah. They really don't. Yeah, and being relatable and also uh, having conversations with them. I know a lot of the times the stuff that I would learn from my coaches is not actually the physical part, but just the mental part. Them sitting mm-hmm. down, just giving them, you know, their life lessons and their mistakes. Sometimes that was more valuable than the actual training, you know? <laughs> yeah, or it's like, there. I mean, we, again, we were, when we trained you and I, I mean, we still train pretty hard. And it's like, when you're our age, like, what are you training for, dude? It's like, why wouldn't I train? But mm-hmm. when you ask kids, like, why are you playing a certain sport? And it's like, no one's ever asked me that, or I just play just for this. It's like, and they're doing their squats. It's like, no, you had like five more there. Mm-hmm. Like this is it's a failure set, and you go back and you do that crap. And you yeah. you never want to be too hard on them, but you're still. It's like we expect like this is dynamic effort. Medicine ball throws into the wall, and you're throwing it like my grandma. And it's like, <laughs> and right. I laugh, but I'm like, no, seriously, you got to throw this shit hard. And that's yep. what it. It was, uh, it, it's, it's definitely big getting, trying to get the most out of those kids. It's, it's getting, them, getting them known. Yeah. And the, the big thing what we do, uh, with rest of mindset, we, we emphasize purpose is greater than your goal, right? So mm-hmm. your goal should be whatever your, your purpose is. Why do you want to achieve this goal? So sometimes when I'm coaching, I say, what's your purpose? Why do you want to do this? Why do you want to achieve it? Every time you think about quitting or anything, just remember your purpose, why you do it. And that just, it fires me up myself when, when I have those days, I'm like, all right, what's my purpose? And it keeps me going through it. Yeah, during quarantine, when all that was going on, I was reading a ton. And Grit by Angela Duckworth was awesome for that. And if, have you heard of that book? I heard of it. I heard of it. I haven't oh, read it. Oh, man, you would love Grit. I'm telling you. It's like it's by like a, a lady that's just a professor, like a math professor. But she's uh-huh. so good, and she knows what she's talking about. And it's the same thing. Are you interested or are you committed? Because if you're committed to something, you're going to find every single way to get to the goal that you have. But if you're interested, man, you're just in, you're just here to go through the motions, right? right? If you're committed, though, if you're committed, you're going to find a reason why you have to do this. I don't want to work out after an eight-hour, nine-hour day. I don't want to work out at six o'clock, but I'm going to do it because I'm committed to where I want to be. And yep. if you, if, if anyone, any high school kid kind of hears that, man, it's like, that's like, oh, wow, what am I actually doing here? 
it's cool. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So, uh, you know, you, you're also big in the nutrition game. And uh, how do you dictate someone's nutrition? I know some of them aren't athletes and everything. I know a lot of people want to hear about nutrition. You know, if you mm-hmm. want to pack on the muscle like you or like me, you know, I need to make some some gains. What's some yeah. advice you could give some people? Well, I think uh, it's all about what they what they're gonna what they can do, right? I know I can weigh my food. I know I can cook chicken and steak tonight, and I'm gonna get to it, and I'm gonna eat it. That's not going to work for everyone. I right. know it. It may work for you and I that we can measure out and organize our stuff, and that's not going to work for some people. Then, then when you're talking to someone about nutrition, their their guard kind of goes down. Okay, this he's not going to make me do this. Right. It's a little bit at a time. When I went through my nutrition course, it was try to find one thing you can do today that's a positive, and you just if you have to do that for a week, and that's the only thing you can do, you do that. Obviously, no one's going to pay for a nutrition coach if I tell you to take two two fish oil a day yeah. and you do that until next time I see you. But what I'm trying to say is do it little by little and anything you like, that's what I'm going to try to do. And it's a lot of back and forth of what can I get you to do during your busy week that you can do. Shakes, people love shakes. So you know what? Two scoops of whey protein, add milk in there. Okay, I don't like peanut butter. I don't know why I don't like peanut butter, but we're going to find another fat that, that's going to go in there. It's crazy how many high school athletes that I would talk to that don't like peanut butter would piss me off. <laughs> so, but, so, college wrestling, that's all I lived on with a peanut butter. <laughs> my buddy used to make, we used to make peanut butter burritos. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And most of my nutrition for the high school kids would be how to gain weight because it was some kids yeah. like, I'm not hungry. I'm like, I'm like, what do, like, just, just eat more. But it was like, okay, so how do we structure this and get you to eat a little bit more? What do you like? Okay, let's have mom cook more of that. It's like, a little bit structured, but so that's for the adding pounds, right? If you're trying right. to lose some weight, it's almost the, it's the same thing, but it's okay. Okay. I'm going to drink water this morning. Okay. okay. I, I, dr- I drank my water. Okay. So it's now how you say, everyone says it, increase your protein. How do I do that? All right. Well, it's, you have your chicken earlier in the week, cook out your chicken and this is going to be your, your dinner. It's not going to be every single lunch, every single yeah. dinner, but you're going to have this and you know, you have to eat it. Mm -hmm. Or if it's when I would do it for the adult clientele, it would be, what can we bring to work that's going to be a snack or a lunch that you won't get sick of that we can do maybe every other day and you would have a switch back and forth, right? Because a lot of people don't want to eat the same things every day. But as we know that I've been eating a lot of the same things for a lot of years. Mm -hmm. And if you want to be lean, if you want to lean out, you're going to have to know by knowing where you are and where you stand with the calories each day. You're going to have to eat something very similar, yeah. right? So that's what I would say if you're trying to lose weight is to try to stick not to a strict plan is obviously to try to increase the protein to try to fill yourself up a little bit more and obviously eat less of the, the, um, the processed stuff. That's the, yeah. that's the easy stuff. But try to find a little bit of a plan, a little bit of momentum. If you can only eat this for lunch every day, eat that for lunch every day. If that salad kicks you in the butt and you don't, you're not hungry for another six hours, then we're going to just smash that salad. And that's what I would say for that. Yeah, definitely. And uh, from my own experience, now that I don't have to follow a, a plan and make a weight class, I feel not harder, but, you know, when I was in college, this was the only thing I could eat. All right. This is the, I mm-hmm. put it in my mind. This is the only thing I could eat. I had to make weight. Mm-hmm. It's the only thing I could eat. Now with me, I kind of have to gain weight or look better. Sometimes mm-hmm. I find myself not eating enough. I'm like, I'm so used to like, skipping meals and cutting weight yeah <laughs> so it's just interesting how much it is now where it's like you're not set on a weight class so i feel like i don't get as much but what do you what do you do for nutrition these days do you do you do you like a meal prep what do you what do you do for that i honestly everyone asks me this and i really don't have a set diet plan it's crazy well i, I don't eat crap anyway like i eat mm-hmm. i eat pretty clean like zach called the caveman diet right a lot of ground mm-hmm. turkey ground ground chicken because that's easy to make and i would prep mm-hmm. it throughout the day um, you know, a week of, and just make a bunch of ground turkey, ground, ground chicken. And that was the easiest thing, especially when I was traveling, moving around a lot, you know, that was the easiest thing. Boom. Kick some, uh, cook some veggies. That's it. If I was no running carbs. low on no carbs, um, so I would get my carbs in the morning. Usually, um, you know, it, it was, I had a very plain diet. Like you said, like I tell people I eat, they're like, that's it. I don't even put seasoning or anything. Sometimes I would have ground ground turkey or chicken with some rice and some like Brussels sprouts. And I would have that three times a day. 
<laughs> you're you're a, you're a psycho. I don't know if see that's why I train so hard so I can eat when I, at my when I was always doing during like I don't know for like the first three months of this year my workouts were so bad. I was eating probably 450 grams of carbs, 220 grams of protein, and like 120 grams of fat. It was like I was like I'm eating weight. I'm eating food just to keep weight on. Like I'll just lose yeah. everything if I didn't eat. So yeah. it's the totally different end of the spectrum just to get to the, yeah. the look that you want. Yeah. I mean, for me, it was just like, okay, this is what I'm going to eat. That's it. That's it. I mean, if I had to stop to get something, I'll go like to a shop, right? Get a salad and maybe get those tuna packets and put it in there. But it wasn't like, oh, I'm going to stop at a McDonald's or anything. That never crossed my mind at all. No excuses. Yeah. You had a goal and you yeah. committed and it was like, this is what's going to happen. And yeah. that's, that's it. That's yeah. it. Sometimes I'll keep the big tub of protein in my car. Okay, shake water. We're good. <laughs> that's that's a great one. That's a good yeah. one. I was driving around this morning. Always keep a protein shake or piece of fruit and a water in your yeah. in your bag. I, I walk yeah. around my cooler every day. Yeah, and for, with the pro wrestling, uh, Bob Backlund actually gave me the, some good advice. He goes, keep a keep a jar of peanut butter in your car. If you're feeling that urge, just take that scoop of peanut butter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'll yeah. do it. That's a good one. Yeah. So going into, you know, that was your passion, strength, and nutrition. You know, the, the whole COVID and the pandemic era now, you had to adapt and change your passion to, to this new this new career, right? Mortgages? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I was approached during the, like, about a month in the pandemic that, hey, we have an opening here at U.S. Bank, and I uh, want to be a mortgage loan officer. I'm like, first of all, what's a loan officer? Like, what is that even? Like, I don't even never even heard of that. I know yeah. you, and then this client that I trained at test and I'm like I know you work at US Bank but like who gives away jobs during a pandemic so you do some investigating and you talk to your parents and like I just said to you good luck telling your parents you're going to wait till COVID's done to be a <laughs> trainer and then pass up all the different benefits and different uh, opportunities that working for a bank and being a mortgage loan officer uh, does for you so I decided to take it after a couple interviews of just saying I know nothing about real estate and they said, we don't care. We know that you're a work ethic sort of uh, kind of guy. And that, that's that's where like, that was like the perfect time for me. Because during quarantine, I was like, okay, I'm not working. I can barely get to the gym if I can, if, it, if there's no one there. So I'm like, I'm kind of going crazy. What am I going to do? So I'm just reading. And I mentioned a book to you before, Grit by Angela Duckworth. That's, that's awesome. 10X Rule by Grant Cardone, another great one. And I was just mowing through books every day. And my brain was just going. I just thought, full effort, whatever you could. Because you get kind of lost when training was my passion. Mm -hmm. It definitely was. But I definitely took a lifestyle or an uh, outlook on it that training, I know it. It's fine. Like, mm -hmm. let's do this. You know what right. I mean? Rather than exhausting all options, which I felt like I wasn't doing. So I was just ready to go and go and go. And then... When that opportunity came around, it was like, okay, switch your brain. You have to adapt, like you said. Let's go all in on this. What do I? What can I read? What can I do? What do I have to do to know this? Because you don't want to go up to someone and tell them, like, I could provide a service. I was confident when I was a trainer or a nutrition. nutrition. I knew what I was doing for the most part. Like, if there was something that came up, low back, something, I knew how to treat them or whatever. But now, okay, now the your biggest decision in your life here, Ray, you're buying a house and you talk yep. to this this Anthony kid and he doesn't know what he's talking about. That's not going to look good for some people. So that right. was a big switch in my head is I need to know whatever there is to know about this before my first day or whatever it is to to really get to know what people are looking for in their loan officer or what they're looking for in a lender. And how does this thing even work? Like, are people even buying houses right now? Like, what mm -hmm. is even going on? So making that transition is definitely a little different, but it is getting me out of my comfort zone and yep. getting getting yourself in a comfort zone. And we talked about this, and we'll, we'll mention it at the end of this, is putting yourself out there is hard. Putting yeah. yourself out there for marketing pur purposes or I provide a service, that's tough. And word of mouth, yeah, it does work, but you're not going to get anywhere by just telling your grandma to tell your neighbor or telling your mom that do any of your friends need refinances. So. Yeah, it's definitely getting me out of my comfort zone, and it's uh, it's it, it's definitely motivating when it's all on you, right? Yeah, and mar marketing is key, especially now with with social media, and you know, there's so much out there. It's so competitive now, um, and like you said, just putting your full effort into this new thing with mortgages. People my age, 
Like I don't even really know what a mortgage is. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't know either. I didn't know either. So what is it? What is a mortgage? What goes into what, what you're doing now? Well, so when you're going to look for a home, right, you probably know some realtors and you'd reach out to them. And then when you want to see if you can qualify for a home of whatever amount that you're looking at that you think is in your ballpark, you would call a lender. And hopefully that lender would be me. And I would educate you on what can you, what can you uh, qualify for right now? What can you qualify based on the numbers? So when I first got into this, you learn about 2008, 2007, when they were handing out no doc mortgages and they were pretty much giving uh, mortgages to anyone that came into the bank why because people that sold those mortgages made commissions off them uh -huh. and hey listen who cares these people are happy in their home well they have three of them and they're eventually going to fail on them and that's what happened in 2008 right before the uh the, the the market crashed but anyway you would reach out to a lender and you would i would i would talk to you right okay this is how much you and your partner make a year, da 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 da, and these are the taxes here, and this is what would go into this, and I would need to see these documents, and I would educate you in the process of what goes into getting your loan, your mortgage, your loan on your home for whatever the home of your dreams is, and hopefully we can make that work. And now there are different programs that we can do and all that, and there's people that rate shop and all that, but hopefully we can get you to where you want to be through that that realtor. So we work with realtors, work with financial advisors, um, uh, who else, CPAs, uh -huh. that deal with people that, okay, I, I want a second home. I want to see what I can afford. And that's when the numbers come in and the numbers are the numbers. And let's see if we can make this work for you. So mm -hmm. that's what it would kind of be is you could either come to me and we know realtors. So it's a big circle of yeah, big connecting team. and a big team of of, of all that. So it's, it's definitely... Um, it's different dealing with numbers rather than training people. My yeah. squats are my passion. I just knew yeah. squats. Listen, I squat this much. You got to listen to me. Yeah. No, now you're talking to 40 year old, 30 year old. Doesn't matter. I mean, right. it could be anyone. And now they're looking for, they're looking for education, in the home buying process. And that, that someone has to be, when you know it, you have to know, you got to, you got to be able to explain to them fully what that, what goes into that process. Yeah, yeah, and it. Th Did this I answer your question? I feel like I was just talking about that. No, no, that's fine. I think that that's that's fine. I think you explained it. Um, you know, the mortgages and everything. Um, and it, that's interesting how you said. Uh, you know, taking a step out and getting out of your comfort zone. It reminds me of a time when I was in college. I had a professor, and he would purposely give me projects that I did not like. <laughs> like he'd be like, "Come on, I don't know anything about this. I I did stuff with the WNBA." And I'm like, come on, I don't know anything about basketball, let alone, you know, women's basketball. He goes, mm -hmm. no, he goes, no, that's all right, because you, you're you going to put your full force in it and you're going to look at the business side and everything that goes around it. He goes, because you can't see yourself. He goes, it's possible. You can't see yourself playing in the, in the WNBA, right? I'm like, no, he goes, that's perfect. He goes, you're going to figure it out now. I'm like, all right. And it was the best thing for me because I learned all the ins and outs and I talked to mm -hmm. people and me being an athlete, I made it relatable. So I feel like you're, you're kind of in the same boat. You know, you, you didn't know the mortgages, you didn't know anything, but now you're forcing yourself to know everything around it. Yeah, and you, you have to ask questions. And yep. my, my mentor there who helps me out every day and you just listen to him talk to people and how different conversations go with people, how to speak to people. It's it's definitely out of your comfort zone, but it's 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 something that it's you definitely have to be uh, committed to. And it's it's scary, don't get me wrong. like. Yeah. It's like, I don't know mostly about, I don't know most, I didn't know most about it, but now it's like, now I know how to talk to people. It's mm -hmm. what, what, what was tough for me at first was picking up the phone to go talk to someone. Like, yeah. you know, someone, or you it's went easy, to go yeah. see someone at an open house and it's like, pick up the phone. Like, oh crap. What if they say no? What's the worst that could happen if someone yeah. says no to you? What's the worst yeah. that can happen if you do fail? This person doesn't like you. Uh, what was explained to me when we first started, I started first started talking to people about the job or whatever it was like and i was like i said some, said something about failure or whatever and one of the guys we were just talking one of the guys i'm interviewing with he loved that i played sports all growing up mm -hmm. first he knew south playing field and all that and he's like have you ever failed at anything i was like no he goes then you're not going to fail at this you're a good guy you know how to treat people you just have to know the ins and outs and it's like that's it with anything but you just have to believe in yourself you have to you have to really think about seeing yourself there it's like you have to really see yourself in that position of what I'm doing right now is worthy to someone else. 
Yep. And I was like, I'm an idiot. I don't know anything. It's like, no, you've been training your ass off for how many months to go help people. You provide a service for someone that's different than others. It's the same thing for mm -hmm. you right now. It's I know I am this person and I'm going to put myself out here and really try to just pro entertain people because I know I'm bad. I know I'm jacked <laughs> and I know I'm funny and I know that I can do this, right? Yeah. So put in the work. You're, you're proud of the work that you put in. Yeah, and, and like you said, you know, what's the worst thing they can say is no. One of my best, one of my best quotes from Gene Zanetti is the answer to every question you don't ask is a no. So it's all right, failure, failure is fine. You learn from it. And you, yeah. with the, with being a strength coach and and you know nutrition coach, you, you know it's a coach, so you know how to talk to people, you know how to make it related, and that's it. You're adapting now, and I guess getting mm -hmm. a mortgage this is a pretty big deal. Like it's a huge deal to a lot of people, right? Families, this is their their homes. So trusting in you, just like how I would trust in you with a workout or a nutrition, right? It's just a different different realm. Yeah, you're not going to go to someone that's a complete bimbo about training, right? If someone has you standing on top of a, a ball with a barbell on your back and you're trying to squat up and down, you'd be like, this is kind of weird here. It's like, yeah, I feel like this is kind of weird. Or you're trying to talk to someone and I'm like fumbling over my words or whatever else. It's like, you're not going to really go to that that lender. I mean, going going back to what you just said, the, the word no, I... Uh, another motivational guy, Jocko Willink, it, there's a, a good, really good video on YouTube. It's titled Good. It's like, are you uncomfortable? Good. You didn't mm -hmm. get what you wanted? Good. You're going to learn from that. It's like you got, you didn't get what you, you didn't get something, at, at your, you didn't get your last promotion? Good, because you're going to get better from that. Right. And I, I have a post that on my, on my wall where my cubicle is. I don't have a cubicle. Just a desk. <laughs> but like on the wall, it, right next to the desktop, it says, good like whatever you're feeling right now and you're feeling like you can't do it or you're feeling like you're feeling like oh man like why did like i used to train people i used to be really comfortable there good that you're uncomfortable because you're gonna provide a service and really help people out with your level of effort that you have because there's a lot of people out there with not good intentions mm -hmm. they're really they're the same thing the trainers nutritionists that it's all about them and same thing with lenders is it they want to find a way to get you in the door so they can make money and when you have a good thought process of just treating people right and you know you have a good service for that that's what it comes down to at the end of the day right right yeah mm -hmm. with that purpose we go around to that purpose, that purpose. Uh, yeah and you know like you said good you're you're exactly where you want to be whether you're you're in the right path or not whether you failed or not you're you're right where you're supposed to be i like that that you're good you're good <laughs> good good yeah. you don't you don't you don't like what happened good because you're gonna learn from it yeah Yep, that's just exactly like when I took the the steps in the first underground strength gym, man. <laughs> Sixth grade, it was you and I think Alex Lundy that got me in, and you know, arguably, you guys should say you started the you started the legend off. <laughs> that's it. The the the, the little skinny one hundred and five pound soaking wet one hundred three. One hundred three. One hundred three. With his long curly hair, and then and then Zach just being disgusted that you had a. A hole in your chest, the side of the of a bowl that he can eat cereal out of. He just like, look at this little kid, get some peanut butter in this dude. And I had ads. I had ads back. back then. I, had a, I was a rip. I used to just before Zach. I used to just do a hundred pull ups and push ups and a hundred abs. Just me being a little kid. And then once I got to the gym, I'm like, okay, let's go. <laughs> it's easy to have abs when you eat two meals a day. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> but uh, I, what I wanted to talk to, we talked about it a little bit before, was that with this job and marketing whatever you have to put yourself out there let people know it's what you do and you've been doing a ton of marketing and you mentioned it before that it's tough to put yourself out there that people from high school college you see what you're doing it's like i can't really see ray doing this all the time i can't yeah. see ray really putting himself out here it's it's tough but you know that if this is what it takes to get me to where i want to go it's you have to put yourself out there yeah definitely and, and it's adapting to the times of course and, you know, that, that was the biggest issue, putting yourself out there, right? Uh, the biggest transition for me was I went from training, right, for college and high school. I didn't want people to see what I was doing. I didn't want to see – I didn't want my competition to see how hard I am working, right? Yeah. Now, right, you're out of college. You're, you're trying to make a career and, you know, make, make yourself a business. You have to. You have to, you have to let the people show you – ha you have to let the people see what you're doing and what your, your talents are and what you're capable of. You know, especially with the with pro wrestling and uh, being a coach and everything. Why would people want to see you or pay money to see you or just get information from you, right? 
And that, mm-hmm. that's the part of putting it out there, showing, showing your worth, showing what you got. And what I put out there, it's not BS. It's stuff that I actually do and actually see. And I, you know what I mean? Um, and that's yeah. super important, especially for what you're doing is, you know, show, show them your words, show them who Anthony is, right? Especially mm-hmm. at times like this, um, you know, like you said, you could tell your grandma, your grandma could tell her neighbors, right? <laughs> uh, people our age, right? Everyone's on social media now. So it's like you expand your market so much more. And uh, yeah. and it's such a competitive – with everything, it's so competitive because now everyone's going into this pool of social media, and it's just being different and doing ways that you could show is better than your competition. Yeah, when, when you just truly just want to be yourself, and it's not myself to put myself out there yeah. and make whatever kind of page or tell people or give people business cards. Like, why do I have a business card? But – it's something that you have to do to get yourself out there. You know, you have to provide a, yeah. a service, but like, like you, what you were saying was you have to somewhere around that. It has to be you, right? Where somewhere yeah. around whatever you're putting out, as long as it's somewhat you and what you're about and what your purpose is, that's when people are going to be like, I like this guy. Cause I relate yeah. to him. Right. Yep. It, I was listening to something the other day. It was like, when you when you're from when you walk down the street in South Plainfield, you don't care. Like you don't like it's like okay, another South Plainfield person. But if you go to England, right, yeah. and like you go to like you go to like uh, I don't know some bar, and you're like, oh crap, this person's from South Plainfield. Yo, we're best buddies now. Yeah, right? yeah. When you relate to someone like that, it's it's pretty sick. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. And like you said, being real. You know, there's a lot of stuff that isn't real out there. You know, it's just mm-hmm. being real, being yourself. And like you said, getting out of your comfort zone. Maybe it's not you. To show yourself off on social media, but do it the way you know that that's real to you, right? Mm-hmm. So you're a nutrition and strength coach before this, right? Sometimes those conversations, maybe on your mortgage page, you show some nutrition mm-hmm. or strength thing, and someone goes, "Oh wow, like I can relate to that." Oh, maybe he doesn't need a, a mortgage or something, but his body might, or his aunt or his uncle. You yeah, know, you, you never know. Yeah, try to try to relate to people the the best as possible, and just like you're within your. You're you're treating them you're treating them like you would treat your family, right? Yeah. The same thing we would like I, I I love seeing you train like your middle school athletes <laughs> and you just like win 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 you're That's running it. around with them like you're treating them like you would treat anyone else like you don't care how much you're getting paid for all this stuff it's it's about doing the work that that will make people happier make people better. Yeah, paying it forward and and giving it back. You know, it's I tell these I tell these kids all the time I'm gonna give you my full effort everything everything that I learned in. I think, what is it, 18 years now with amateur yeah. wrestling? I started when I was five years old. I literally told him, I said, I'm going to give you all this knowledge that I have. A, before I forget about it, or B, until I can't anymore. But that's what I, I'm telling them. I'm honest. I'm honest with them. And, and honesty is, is important now, and being real is very important. I you know, I tell them, I'm like, I'm, I'm literally giving you all my mistakes that I did and telling you mm-hmm. things that you should do the right way, and I explain why this is right. And why that's wrong, you know, and it, it, it's, it's a, not a weird thing, but it's just the, the kids react to it so much more. And our coaches did that too. I mean, we were on similar teams or similar, uh, like grades and people. And that's what our coaches did to us. Like if you, if you wanted to, and this is why I miss, this is the toughest part about leaving training is that like when people see that I post on Instagram, whatever, that I'm working for us bank now. And, uh, like, that's what stinks is that you see, like, the, the high school kids or, like, the college kids now that you train for years, like, dude, I'm going to miss you. Like, you're not part of that process anymore. Mm-hmm. And you genuinely cared for that person. You genuinely right. cared that you were part of this person's process to get, go to college and get the scholarship or gain 15 pounds and get what they wanted out of uh-huh. training and everything else. And they used to have back pain. Now they don't. And even in you know, adult clients, so you really care about the pri- the process. You just, it, it, that, that was the, that was the, the toughest part for me was just getting messages. It's like, man, like people actually cared about what you did because at the time, like when you're doing what you're doing right now, it's like, no one really is going to like have like a memorial about you about that. You're doing such a great job until you leave or whatever else. So yeah, it's, it's always, it's always tough to leave that sort of position, but you, you pay it forward. You're trying to treat yeah. people right. You pay it forward, and then they learn from you, and they, they expand it out. Um, it's funny. I, I talk to a lot of my old college uh, teammates and uh, old coaches, and I say, 
I'm like, there's these, you know, the kids on my team, I would name certain moves after my coaches. I'd be like, oh, this is the Nick Solzer top ride. And I'm like, and I'm screaming out, do the Solzer, do the Solzer. And I was talking to Nicky Solzer like a, like a week ago. I'm like, dude, like, you might not think you're in wrestling anymore, but you are. Because these kids, they know who you are, man. They know mm -hmm. your, your wrist ride on top and everything. So, it, you know, paying it forward. And, and it's funny when I told him that because he, he appreciated it so much. Because, like, now he does this, he does stuff with the FBI and stuff and nothing completely related to wrestling at all. And I, I, he said that put a smile on my face. I'm like, good. So <laughs> I'm glad, you know. And, you know, you'll be surprised how many people, you know, you probably affected too uh, as being a strength coach. They, they'll remember it and they'll, they'll pay it forward, hopefully. Yeah, I mean, we, I mean, before we were talking, we talked about Zach how many different times. That's where we were. That's where we kind of relate from is this different work ethic of caring about people and just um, when you have a goal, you you work towards it, and that's that's where we're from. That's where Zach brainwashed us when we were younger <laughs> to do really hard stuff for an hour, like really hard stuff, and. You didn't know if it was going to pay off in the end, but you wanted something, so that's what you did, right? right. And that that's that's different. A lot of people don't do that now. Yeah. Like that kind of training, that kind of training's gone and that kind of mindset, that kind of mindset's gone to put yourself through an hour of hard work for for yourself, right? Or or and then to try to put that and not try to put it or try to explain to kids that that's what they're trying to do now. Like this is this is what this is about now. They that that when when you go when you carry on you go to the fbi like your buddy or you, you go on to work at a bank that when you those lessons that you try to teach people then they they now carry that onto their life and the same thing with zach i haven't i mean i haven't seen you guys in forever but when when i see you guys next and i had i see all the guys i used to train with it's like we're bros because we went through that together we went through the grinds and excuses oh, and quitting was never an option not that never circled my mind once no, it still doesn't. Still, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a psycho working out by myself for two hours after work now, but it, it's what needs to be done, right? It needs to be done. The work needs to be done. So your adversity moment. I asked everyone this. What is some adversity you've been through in your life that is a part of you, part of your journey and story now? Um, I think I would say when I stopped playing football, just because in my head, I trained fully to play football, right? I trained everything I had. And I did everything to play football. Little did I know that I liked training a lot more than I liked football, or I was a lot better at training than I was at football. But then when that realization comes, it's like, okay, what do I do now? What's your why? What's your purpose? And that was an adversity moment that puts you through a tailspin of what is going on now? Because I don't even know what I'm supposed to be doing, right? Do I just work out just for this? I can't not work out now. So that leading me down a path of, Going back to where I used to train in high school, late high school, done test sports, getting hired, being taught personality and being to treat people right. Because I really did not treat people very well when I first started. I really wanted to be a hard ass. This is the way we train, like we were taught. And you can't do that up in the area that I that I trained out of. And then you learn your lesson through that. And then you get a couple, you get a couple bumps in a row of people, you rubbing people the wrong way. And that's a different adversity moment because I know what I'm talking about. It, and then it's okay. So then you move around what you're doing. And then now you learn a little bit something else. And then I feel like I'm really getting better at this. And then you change your profession. So I think adversity always hits, but you always have to be able to adapt and move around and think yourself in a certain light that you can do whatever you put your mind to. If you're committed to something, you can do whatever, but adversity will always hit and you're always going to have to move around it. And you never never accept less than what you think you deserve a lot of people will 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 definitely think that making a certain amount of money i'm cool i'm cool with it. i have a certain amount of friends i'm cool with it i'm okay with my relationship that i have we're okay but listen she's the best i'm gonna get it's all good i should just stick with her no it's listen what do you want to maximize your results are you going to hit adversity that you're gonna you gotta you gotta have that same sort of uh idea for yourself all the way through you know you have to really 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 expect the most of yourself when adversity hits 
Yep, maximize your worth. I like that. Yeah, <laughs> that man. was awesome. That's I'm getting awesome. pumped up. I gotta bust out some push-ups. Now. Yeah, gotta get the push-ups in now. <laughs> oh man, I was getting get all some, jacked up. Yeah, get the get the dumbbells out. Hit, hit them curls. <laughs> get you some squats. I got it. Get some box squats in. <laughs> yeah, I, I, tomorrow tomorrow's leg day, so I'm gonna be. I, I, this this actually got me motivated, kind of yeah. like just kind of talking about this sort of yeah. stuff. Yeah, I do. I do leg day on Monday too. I think Zach does too. <laughs> Monday. That's it. Some people do Monday International Chest Day. No, we're we're squatting, man. We're we're hitting it heavy. <laughs> my, want, my quads, my quads are gonna hate me tomorrow. Yeah. I want to make sure I'm I'm able to walk during the weekend, so I hit it on Monday. <laughs> That's it. That's it, my man. Yeah. That's so it. I I always end it with this question too, and uh, it's also another oh another pretty hard one. Um, some some get it easier than others. Who is okay. Anthony Torsha, and what do you want to be known for? The who could always change. The what holds you accountable. Yeah. Yeah, I was, again, I listened to a lot of motivation stuff, and this lady was getting interviewed, and she asked, again, Angela Duckworth, she asked the, the podcaster, like, what, do you, what did you want to do? Did you, this is really, really what you wanted to do? Um, I just kind of, I want to treat people right. And whatever I'm doing, I want people to, I want my family to be proud of who I am and who I became. I want to be able to treat my family and friends to whatever I would like them to be treated to, you know. Uh, I think just making people happy that you treated them right is what I want, wanted to do because there is nothing better than training someone or coaching someone or just being around someone, have them accomplish something that you're a part of. And uh, I think right now that's getting people into the homes of their dreams. And that's what I'm want to be really good at is be someone that isn't be isn't seen as salesy in a very bad not a bad I don't want to say that or a uh, a weird uh, industry now so someone that is a real person in this industry that it's not just numbers it's about the people yep. and treating people treating people right is definitely yep. what I would like to be known for yeah I like that I like that you know you're part of you're part of them finding their their dream home and and you know uh, the rest of their lives, basically. So I, I like that, and uh, I appreciate your time. I appreciate you having you on here. We're gonna have to do a part two when we're in the weight room, man, crushing them weights. We have to. We need it. <laughs> Let's go. We'll we'll do a we'll do a full body just so like my chest and my dubs are all pumped up, and then that's when I'll be shirtless, yeah. just get the chains just cranking out, out. Right? Get the chains out, and we're gonna supposed to be talking, but we're just gonna end up just doing push-ups, just being yeah. just tools on camera but it's all good that's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, what the ladies, that's what the ladies like to see yeah yeah it's been been long due my man i appreciate no, we'll it. you we'll do it up we'll do yeah. it up. i appreciate you thank you so much for for hopping on where can people find you where can people hit you up to to go get their mortgages or their new houses well i just started instagram anthony mortgages anthony mortgages right anthony anthony mortgages on instagram i have my instagram's torsha39 uh, my cell and everything is right on the internet for everyone to find. If you Google me, which is kind of pretentious to say Google me, but you'll find me on there. <laughs> but um, you got everyone that probably is watching this can find me on Instagram pretty well, and you know where to where to find me. But thank you for reaching out because when you reached out to me, this was pretty cool to be interviewed. I don't know if I've been interviewed like this before. It's really got me pumped up just kind of talking about stuff like this because you know why people come to you or whatever else they're. They're not just here just to pass the time. They kind of want to be motivated and see why people are doing sort of stuff. And there's real people behind real jobs. And uh, this this really got me motivated just to kind of talk about the old days and stuff like that. So I appreciate you inviting me on. Yep, I appreciate you. We got to get that part two, my man. Thank you. Let's go.